Lesson 10 Education in Arts and Sciences Sabbath Afternoon November 28 There is nothing more calculated to energize the mind and strengthen the intellect than the study of the Word of God. No other book is so potent to elevate the thoughts, to give vigor to the faculties, as the broad and nobling truths of the Bible. If God's Word were studied as it should be, men would have a breath of mind, a nobility of character, and a stability of purpose that are rarely seen in these times. The search for truth will reward the seeker at every turn, and each discovery will open up richer fields for his investigation. Councils to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 460. The work of every teacher, every parent, should be to fasten the minds of the children and youth upon the grand truths of the word of inspiration. This is the education essential for this life and for the life to come. And let it not be thought that this will prevent the study of the sciences or cause a lower standard in education. The knowledge of God is as high as heaven and as broad as the universe. There is nothing so ennobling and invigorating as the study of the great themes which concern our eternal life. Let the youth seek to grasp these God-given truths, and their minds will expand and grow strong in the effort. It will bring every student who is a doer of the word into a broader field of thought and secure for him a wealth of knowledge that is imperishable. My Life Today, page 107. God calls upon teachers to behold the heavens and to study His works in nature. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Psalm 19, verses 1 to 3. Shall we not strive to understand the wonderful works of God? We should do well to read often the 19th Psalm, that we may understand how the Lord binds up His law with His created works. Can we find for our schools any textbook filled with such deep, earnest declarations as is the Word of the Living God? Then why should this book be laid aside for the writings of infidel authors? What more valuable book could be placed in the hands of students than that which teaches them how they may inherit eternal life? The lessons of Bible history should be kept before the youth in our schools that those who have no love for God and no interest in spiritual things may become interested and learn to love the Word. Let the student keep his Bible always with him and as he has opportunity, read a text and meditate upon it. While walking in the streets, waiting at a railway station, waiting to meet an engagement, let him improve the opportunity to gain some precious thought from the treasure house of truth. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, pages 453 and 463. Sunday, November 29. The Lord Alone. In the beginning, God was revealed in all the works of creation. It was Christ that spread the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. It was His hand that hung the worlds in space and fashioned the flowers of the field. His strength setteth fast the mountains. The sea is His, and He made it. Psalm 65, verse 6 and 95, verse 5. It was He that filled the earth with beauty and the air with song. And upon all things in earth and air and sky, He wrote the message of the Father's love. Even now all created things declare the glory of His excellence. The flowers breathe fragrance and unfold their beauty and blessing to the world. The sun sheds its light to gladden a thousand worlds. The ocean, itself the source of all our springs and fountains, receives the streams from every land but takes to give. The mists ascending from its bosom fall in showers to water the earth that it may bring forth and bud. The Desire of Ages, pages 20 and 21. All that the mind can grasp is open before us in the Bible. This is our spiritual food. We are to contemplate the wonderful works of God and repeat to our children the lessons learned that we may lead them to see His skill, His power, and His grandeur in His created works.
Councils to Parents, Teachers, and Students, pages 453 and 454. Through the creation, we are to become acquainted with the Creator. The Book of Nature is a great lesson book, which in connection with the Scriptures, we are to use in teaching others His character and guiding lost sheep back to the fold of God. As the works of God are studied, the Holy Spirit flashes conviction into the mind. It is not the conviction that logical reasoning produces, but unless the mind has become too dark to know God, the eye too dim to see Him, the ear too dull to hear His voice, a deeper meaning is grasped and the sublime, spiritual truths of the written word are impressed on the heart. Christ's Object Lessons, page 24 The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. Psalm 111, verses 2-4 to four. He who placed the pearls in the ocean, and the amethyst and the chrysolite among the rocks, is a lover of the beautiful. The sun rising in the heavens is the representative of him who is the light and life of all that he has made. Shall we, in the enjoyment of the gifts, forget the giver? Let them rather lead us to contemplate his goodness and his love. Let all that is beautiful in our earthly home remind us of the crystal river and green fields, the waving trees and the living fountains, the shining city and the white-robed singers of our heavenly home, that world of beauty that no artist can picture and no mortal tongue describe. My Life Today, page 175 Monday, November 30 the Beauty of Holiness Take the Bible as a study book and see if you are not filled with the love of God. Your heart may be barren, your intellect feeble, but if you will prayerfully study the Word of God, light will flash into your mind. God works with every diligent student. Teachers who will learn from the great teacher will realize the help of God as did Daniel and his fellows, of whom the record states, As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. Councils to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 455. God calls upon men to see him in the wonders of the heavens. Lift up your eyes on high, he says, and behold who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 26. God would have us study the works of infinity and from this study learn to love and reverence and obey him. The heavens and the earth with their treasures are to teach the lessons of God's love and care and power. Councils to Parents, Teachers, and Students, pages 456 and 457. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart, the human heart, with its conflicting emotions of joy and sorrow, the wandering wayward heart, which is the abode of so much impurity and deceit. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. He knows its motives, its very intents and purposes. Go to him with your soul all stained as it is. Like the psalmist, throw its chambers open to the all-seeing eye, exclaiming, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Steps to Christ, pages 34 and 35. His tender compassion fell with a touch of healing upon weary and troubled hearts. Even amid the turbulence of angry enemies, he was surrounded with an atmosphere of peace. The beauty of his countenance, the loveliness of his character, above all, the love expressed in look and tone, drew to him all who were not hardened in unbelief. Had it not been for the sweet, sympathetic spirit that shone out in every look and word, he would not have attracted the large congregations that he did. The afflicted ones who came to him felt that he linked his interest with theirs as a faithful and tender friend, and they desired to know more of the truths he taught. Heaven was brought near. They longed to abide in his presence, that the comfort of his love might be with them continually.
In his life, Jesus of Nazareth differed from all other men. His entire life was characterized by disinterested benevolence and the beauty of holiness. In his bosom existed the purest love, free from every taint of selfishness and sin. His life was perfectly harmonious. He is the only true model of goodness and perfection. Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 1, page 182. Tuesday, December 1. Experts in Error We need to search the Scriptures daily that we may know the way of the Lord and that we be not deceived by religious fallacies. The world is full of false theories and seductive spiritualistic ideas which tend to destroy clear spiritual perception and to lead away from truth and holiness. Especially at this time do we need to heed the warning, let no man deceive you with vain words. We must be careful lest we misinterpret the scriptures. The plain teachings of the word of God are not to be spiritualized that the reality is lost sight of. Do not overstrain the meaning of sentences in the Bible in an effort to bring forth something odd in order to please the fancy. Take the scriptures as they read. Avoid idle speculation. The Upward Look, page 316. Let no man by scientific presentations lead minds away from the real to the imaginary. Let God be revealed in His true greatness. God calls for men who, in the midst of the idolatry offered to nature, will look from nature to nature's God. God uses nature as one of His servants to reveal His power. These things, the objects of His creation, show forth His handiwork. Of all that God has created, man, the crowning object of his creation, has the most greatly dishonored him. In the judgment, human beings will stand before God ashamed and condemned because, though given intellect, reason, and power of speech, they would not obey God's law. A man is but a man. The words that fall from his lips are not to be regarded as coming from God. Unless God stands beside those in His service and works with them, they are nothingness. For God's people to put their trust in men and make flesh their arm is the height of folly. The Upward Look, page 294. Those who read and listen to the sophistries that prevail in this age do not know God as He is. They contradict the Word of God and extol and worship nature in the place of the Creator. While we may discern the workings of God and the things He has created, these things are not God. The physical creation testifies of God and Jesus Christ as the great Creator of all things. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. John chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Men today declare that Christ's teachings concerning God cannot be sustained by the things of the natural world, that nature is not in harmony with the Old and New Testament scriptures. This supposed lack of harmony between nature and science does not exist. The word of the God of heaven is not in harmony with human science, but it is in perfect accord with his own created science. The Upward Look, page 278. Wednesday, December 2. Foolishness and Wisdom God calls upon His creatures to turn their attention from the confusion and perplexity around them and admire His handiwork. As we study His works, angels from heaven will be by our side to enlighten our minds and guard them from Satan's deceptions. As you look at the wonderful things that God's hand has made, let your proud, foolish heart feel its dependency and inferiority. How terrible it is when the acknowledgement of God is not made when it should be made. How sad to humble oneself when it is too late. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 457. From nature we can gain only an imperfect idea of the greatness and majesty of God. We see the working of His power and His wisdom, but He Himself is beyond our comprehension. The ocean, the cataract, the lofty, rugged mountains reveal but imperfectly His handiwork. Satan has introduced confusion and deformity into the creation of God. 
something more than nature is needed to reveal the character of the Father. In these days, many deceptions are being taught as truth. Some of our brethren have taught views which we cannot endorse. Fanciful ideas, strained and peculiar interpretations of the Scripture are coming in. Some of these teachings may seem to be but jots and tittles now, but they will grow and become snares to the inexperienced. The Upward Look, page 316 In the Savior's parable teaching is an indication of what constitutes the true higher education. Christ might have opened to men the deepest truths of science. He might have unlocked mysteries which have required many centuries of toil and study to penetrate. He might have made suggestions in scientific lines that would have afforded food for thought and stimulus for invention to the close of time. But he did not do this. He said nothing to gratify curiosity or to satisfy man's ambition by opening doors to worldly greatness. In all his teaching, Christ brought the mind of man in contact with the infinite mind. He did not direct the people to study men's theories about God, his word, or his works. He taught them to behold him as manifested in his works, in his word, and by his providences. Christ did not deal in abstract theories, but in that which is essential to the development of character, that which will enlarge man's capacity for knowing God and increase his efficiency to do good. He spoke to men of those truths that relate to the conduct of life and that take hold upon eternity. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 22 and 23. At the close of his labors, Paul looked for the results of his work. Out of the large assembly that had listened to his eloquent words, only three had been converted to the faith. He then decided that from that time he would maintain the simplicity of the gospel. He was convinced that the learning of the world was powerless to move the hearts of men, but that the gospel was the power of God to salvation. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 1062. Thursday, December 3. The Lord Answered Job In true science, there can be nothing contrary to the teaching of the Word of God, for both have the same author. A correct understanding of both will always prove them to be in harmony. Truth, whether in nature or in revelation, is harmonious with itself in all its manifestations. But the mind not enlightened by God's Spirit will ever be in darkness in regard to His power. This is why human ideas in regard to science so often contradict the teaching of God's Word. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 258 In the lessons direct from nature, there is a simplicity and purity that makes them of the highest value. All need the teaching to be derived from this source. In itself, the beauty of nature leads the soul away from sin and worldly attractions and toward purity, peace, and God. Too often the minds of students are occupied with men's theories and speculations, falsely called science and philosophy. They need to be brought into close contact with nature. Let them learn that creation and Christianity have one God. Let them be taught to see the harmony of the natural with the spiritual. Let everything which their eyes see or their hands handle be made a lesson in character building. Thus the mental powers will be strengthened, the character developed, the whole life ennobled. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 24 and 25. Nature is a power, but the God of nature is unlimited in power. His works interpret his character. Those who judge him from his handiworks and not from the suppositions of great men will see his presence in everything. They behold his smile in the glad sunshine and his love and care for man in the rich fields of autumn. Even the adornments of the earth, as seen in the grass of living green, the lovely flowers of every hue, and the lofty and varied trees of the forest, testify to the tender, fatherly care of our God and to his desire to make his children happy. The power of the great God will be exerted in behalf of those that fear him. Listen to the words of the prophet. Hast thou not known? 
Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Verses 28 to 31. Selected Messages, Book 3, pages 309 and 310. For further reading, Testimonies for the Church, Results of Sin, Volume 8, pages 255 and 256, and That I May Know Him, The Voice of Nature, page 144.